Okay, hi, Matthew 504, Project 3, that's due November 14th. This is really the end of the uh, exam period, so very near the end. It leaves the teaching staff very little time, so November 14th is here, an exam period is here. Um, so no late submissions on this one, please. Feel free to submit early if you'd like. Um, this project is lighter than other projects, and it's lighter than what Project 3 was in previous years. Uh, so you're watching this explainer video. So uh, we will have, just so you know, consultation hours on the Wednesdays up until the day before the project submission. Um, so that will be the only help you get, except for the practical um, this week. Uh, right. And uh, we might try to answer some ed questions, try to answer each other's questions as well. So there are 100 points on this project, 10 points are for handing in, please do it exactly as uh, we ask for. And this is very similar to previous submissions. And there are 20 points for uh, creativity and originality, and that's also just for neatness. Uh, okay, so these are a subjective 20 points and re remaining 70 points are for the tasks. So this project is different uh, than the others. In the sense that in the first project, we gave you code for a working package or a type of package, and you modified this code. In the second project, you created your own package and used it. Here, you are doing scripting. It, it is not code that has to be uh, necessarily reused and does not necessarily have to be most generic. It's scripting, which you're going to put in this uh, Jupyter Notebook analysis.ipynb. Okay. And uh, what you're doing is analysis of data of house price data. So this is a house price data set uh, available from Kaggle. So you should download this data set from Kaggle, Melbourne housing fool.csv. Okay, make sure you get the full one. Uh, so the, the big one. And you have simply five tasks. Okay. And these tasks are not specified in great, 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 great detail. They're actually uh, leaving some room for you to um, maneuver a bit and uh, do things as you would like. Um, this is kind of similar to a situation where you end up uh, in a, in your first job or your second job and, and your boss tells you, hey, please uh, take this data set and extract some information from it. So in the first task, what we want you to do is some exploratory data analysis of a single variable. So you choose a single column from the housing data set. Uh, it can be uh, price, rooms, method, distance, etc., and present it, present summaries of it, uh, present histograms of it, present summary statistics, etc. In the second task, we want you to compare two variables. So, you know, uh, price is a function of distance to the city. Now, sometimes you don't have these variables directly in the data set, so you should do some transformations of your own. Right? And a lot of the things you'll be dealing with is also some missing data. So you'll need to maybe drop the observations that have missing data. Um, in the third task, we want you to take a time series over time. And so look at the data set and actually extract from it, create some other data that looks at over time, over time meaning over weeks or over months or over days, okay? And see some trends or, you know, we're asking you to plot the volume of sales over time. Okay, so you need to do some uh, auxiliary calculations for that. The fourth task is to carry out simple linear regression, so fitting a line. Okay, we already had examples of, uh, of that. We used it kind of for something else in this course. If you go to unit three, um, I'm using GLM or just GLM. So see, we did, we, we, we did fit... Uh, we, well, we fit a, a parabola in this case, right? This is with Paul Bellet early on in the course when we looked at the complexity, uh, well, sorry, the computation time of bubble sort. Okay, so you, you've used GLM. So this is the Julia way, which is not so different from the R way of uh, fitting linear models. Now, what we want you to do now is to um, do linear regression and make some prediction to predict the house price. So create a model. Now, you don't have to do this in full statistical rigor, but if you know what p-values are, then you can make use of them. Otherwise, you can maybe break up the data set into what you'd call a training set and a validation set. 
and you could fit the model on the training set and see how it works on the validation set. This does not have to be a uh, kind of killer result in the sense that you, you know, uh, really are able to make a model for predicting house prices, but you're working towards that direction. There's also some resources in chapter eight of the statistics with Julia, but you can get it from elsewhere also. So task five, the slightly heavier uh, task is also slightly more difficult. And what you wanna do is to create a quality animation movie presenting uh, the Melbourne housing data over time. So this is where you should be creative in how it looks uh, and what it does. Uh, and you know you need to work a bit to make it work. You need to work with coordinate systems, get the coordinates, plot them on, export the movie. Uh, we recommend trying to use Mackie.jl and one of the associated packages. But feel free to just do animations if you, for some reason, can't, as we've shown you here. Um, we had we had basic animations that we created here, right? So these basic GIF animations. Now, just when you create this animation and uh, and uh, and and you hand in the project, please. Put the animation file not in the Jupyter Notebook because that will make the Jupyter Notebook very big. So don't save the animation file in the Jupyter Notebook. Save it into the GitHub repo. And I must say that this is not great practice. And the reason it's not good practice is because GitHub is great at finding differences, but it doesn't do so for binary files. It does so very well for textual files. So putting big binary files like animation files in Git is generally not good practice. In our case, it should be okay as long as your animation is not too big. Make sure that it's not too big. So make sure that you manage this hurdle of making it not too big. And try not to have dozens of commits of it. Just commit once or twice and it should be okay. We'll uh, use this not best practice here. Uh, if you really don't want it in Git and you want to put it on some other drive that is like a hidden YouTube video, you know, a a non-public YouTube video or something like that, then do that and give us a link. Um, anything can work. Okay, so that's the project. It's uh, lighter. Uh, of course, the material for it, you started already uh, last week with uh, Claire, and Claire will continue with you uh, this week for three lectures. And that's on unit eight. And this is on the very interesting, well, let's say very useful area of just working with heterogeneous data sets. Uh, and there are many packages and sub packages and sub ways of doing things, et cetera, and variations. Important thing is just to get the job done. And I'm sure you will. So good luck with that. Bye-bye.